Pardon, sir. Oh, that's all right. The desk is over there, sir. Do you think anybody can tell we're just married? Oh, of course not. Oh, come on, honey. Yes, sir? Uh, hello. <laughs> I am... Uh, that is, we, my wife and I, would like to have a room. Oh, inside room or outside room? Would you rather have an inside room or an outside room, honey? Well, I, I think we'd better have an inside, dear, just in case it rains. Oh, uh, what I meant, sir, was, uh, do you prefer a room facing the street or courtyard? Oh, uh, I think we'd prefer one facing the street, if it's all the same to you. It is. Uh, will you stand, please? Sure. Remember what Pop said. Don't sign anything without first reading it. <laughs> That's all right, honey. We're just registering. Oh. Well, she doesn't understand about these things, my wife. There. How do you like it, honey? Mr. and Mrs. Horace Jason. Oh, it looks wonderful. <laughs> you might as well get used to it. You're going to have it the rest of your life. <laughs> Should we tell him? Well, he looks trustworthy. Look. I wouldn't want anybody else to know about this, but we were just married this morning. We are on a honeymoon. No. Yeah. I told you nobody could tell. Well, allow me to congratulate you. Well, thank you. Thanks. Uh, now, you won't uh, tell anybody. You know how it is. Well, never having been married, I don't know how it is, but I'll keep it a secret. Well, thank you. Yes. <laughs> Show Mr. and Mrs. Jason up to room 605. Oh, have you a trunk? Oh, yeah, but it's outside. You want me to go get it? Oh, no, no. I'll have it sent up. And if there's anything else you wish, just to phone down. Oh, well, there is one thing. Could you have someone wake us at 6 o'clock in the morning? Yes. Yeah. Tomorrow morning? Yes. You see, we have to catch a 7 o'clock train back to Connecticut. I've been drafted, and I'm being sworn into the Army at 10 o'clock. My, what sacrifices they're asking nowadays. Well... Show them up to the room. Go on, go on. Go on. Right this way, sir. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Uh, you won't forget about that call at 6 uh, o'clock. No, I won't forget. Oh, no. Anything else you'd like, sir? Huh? Anything else? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, not right now, thank you. Here's your key, sir. Thank you. Oh. Here. Well, that's for the two of you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. No, well, that's all right. Don't mention it. I won't. He looked at you kind of funny, didn't he, Horace? Well, that's the trouble with these city people. They expect big tips for things they get paid for doing anyway. But the trunk is pretty big. It would have been better if we hadn't brought it. But you know how sentimental Mother is. She took it on her honeymoon, so I had to take it on mine. Yeah, I know. But even so, it's nearly empty. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. 
horse. That tickles. <laughs> oh, gee, I'm happy. Me too. Just think. We've been married 11 hours and 27 minutes already. Gosh. And it seems like we were just married. Uh-huh. That time flies. Yeah, <laughs> don't it? <laughs> Oh, Horace, it's so pretty out there. Yeah, isn't it? I guess there isn't any place like Times Square at night. Just think. Well, this is the first time in my whole life I've ever been outside of Hawkett Center. Well, I promised you a honeymoon you'd never forget, didn't I? Oh, Horace, you're so good to me. No, I'm not. It's my honeymoon, too, isn't it? Gee, just one night for a honeymoon. Then I gotta go into the army. It hardly seems fair. Well, don't you worry, honey. The first thing I do when I get to camp, I'm gonna ask for a leave. I'm sure if you spoke to the general, you'd have no trouble. That's just what I'm gonna do. And if he's a married man, too, he'll understand just how I feel. Oh, let's forget you're leaving tomorrow. It might spoil everything. All right. Let's make this a honeymoon we'll remember all our lives. Something we can tell our children about. Of course. Jeepers, Millie, it's all right to talk about children after you're married. Gee, I'm tired. Well, no wonder. It's 9 o'clock. Back home, I'd have been in bed an hour already. I'm not a bit tired. You're not? Mm -mm. Well, I guess it must be the excitement and everything. Well, would you like to play a little casino for a while? But Horace, dear, I don't play casino. Oh, shucks, I always forget about that. Well, maybe you'd like to go out. I've read a lot about these New York nightclubs. Oh, no. Our honeymoon's costing you enough without squandering any more money in nightclubs. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, I tell you what, I could get a bottle of champagne, just a little bottle, and we could have a nightclub right here in this room, just you and me. But champagne, isn't that expensive? Nothing's too good for Mrs. Horace Jason on her honeymoon. And I can go down and get it myself, and that'll save handing out another tip to one of those fellas in uniform. I've never had champagne. Well, Mrs. Jason, you're gonna get it tonight. <laughs> Wait till I tell the fellas back home we had champagne. Boy! Now, don't get lonesome while I'm gone. Don't be gone long. No, I'll be back in a jiffy. Millie, no sense in sitting around and spoiling that nice new dress, do you think? It is getting kind of wrinkled. Sure it is, and it's brand new, too. It'd be a shame to ruin it. Well, why don't you make yourself comfortable, huh? All right, dear. Why now? Millie. Oh, Millie. Poor kid, she must be all tuckered out.
Willie. Are you really asleep, kid? Sure, I thought you'd at least stay awake till I get back. Millie. Sweetheart. Do you always sleep this way? You're liable to suffocate with all these covers over your head. Is that you, Horace? Yes, dear. Well, who are you talking to? Why, are you, dear. Oh. Oh, dead man. Of course I'm sure. I was even lying down beside him. I thought it was my wife. Are you kidding? She don't look very dead to me. Well, you see, he was covered up from head to foot, and I thought maybe my wife always slept that way. Don't you know how your wife sleeps? Well, no, I... Well, you see, Horace and I were just married this morning. Oh, that's different. All the same, a, a dead man don't get up and walk away. Well, he must have. Well, he... Mm-hmm. How many bottles of this did you drink? Millie and I haven't had a drink all day. That's right, Horace just got that bottle. Yeah, you can see we didn't even open it. If you don't believe it, you can smell my breath. Look. Okay, okay, I'm sorry I brought it up. Say, you don't think you could be seeing things, do you? You know, hallucinations? I mean, being married today, kind of nervous and excited, it might be your imagination. Imagination? I can imagine a lot more pleasant things than sleeping next to a corpse. Mm. Indubitably. Well, anyway, whatever it was, it's gone now. It certainly is. Yep, it certainly is. Would you like me to stick around a while? I would not. I didn't think you would. Well, if you see anything again, just yell out. My room's right down the corridor. Number 624. Name's Callahan. Pat Callahan. Thank you, Mr. Callahan. I don't think we'll be bothering you anymore. I hope not. For your sake. Happy dreams. Thanks. I sure feel like I could use a drink after what's happened. So could I. Well, just a little bit. All right, honey. Oh, Look out for it. Oh, these must be powerful stuff, I'll Millie. Say. Quieten down now. Here. Can you imagine getting into bed on my honeymoon with that dead man? Yeah. Are you sure he was dead, Horace? Well, he didn't move when I patted him. When you what? Horace, how could you? Well, Millie, I thought it was you, honey. 
Oh, my poor horse. Gee, it must have been quite a shock. Yeah, the first time in my life I ever saw a dead man. I had to be lying right beside him. Well, let's forget about it and go to sleep, huh? Here's to Mr. and Mrs. Horace Jason for a happy honeymoon. Mm -hmm. I'm beginning to feel tired. Me too. The excitement, I guess. Sure, I know. Maybe you better get me a bromo. It's in the trunk. All right, honey. You got the key, Millie? Trunk's locked. Locked? Well, I thought I left it open. The key's on the dresser. Draws it in, honey. Well, the third one, I think. same guy you saw before? Of course. Now look, if this is some kind of a game... Now listen, Mr. Callahan. There was a body in that trunk. It was all doubled up just like this. I'll show you. Got his knees all bent, his arms folded, and his head in here. That's right. Only the trunk was closed. Closed? Yes. Come on, I'll show you. Well, you better help me. What, too? Just like that. We didn't find it out until I wanted a bromo seltzer. And then Horace... Who me out? Oh. Oh, good heavens, I've locked him in. Well, give me the key. I'll open it. The key. The key. Oh, what did I do with the key? It's in my pocket. Oh, oh well, give it to me, dear. Oh, we can't do that, can he? Oh, what did I do? Oh, oh, oh! oh stop yelling! Oh, stop yelling, stop yelling will you? I got a bunch of skeleton keys in my room. can't breathe in there. Oh, my God. Right. One of them ought to fit oh, this no. one. Oh, Horace. Oh, Horace. Oh, oh, hurry up, Mr. Cowhead. Oh, oh, my poor horse. Are you all right, Horace? Give me some air. I'm suffocating. Oh, well, got some holes in here. Well, how? What with? Forget an ice cream or anything, but... Do nothing, Millie. Oh, all right, dear. Oh, pardon me, but have you got a nice pick? No speaking. Oh, dear. What do you think of these, huh? Well, if they don't work, this will. Be careful with that. Make it. Thank you. 
One of these ought to fit. There's enough of them. Well, that's great. You'll suffocate in there. There's just one more minute, Horace, and... Oh, now the trunk's gone. Oh, my poor Horace. Give me the police. That's the big idea. You wanted him, didn't you? Well, he's in there. No kidding. Yep. We followed him into the room, but he got wise and put up a fight, so we had to clunk him. You sure it's the Duke? Huh. Are we sure it's the Duke? It's him, all right. Now, we frisked him, but didn't find nothing on him. You didn't? Uh -uh. And it must be still there. Pete, you go back and watch that room in case he tipped off somebody else. Stay there until you hear from me. And you, Joe, you go frisk the Duke's place. Maybe there's something around there that'll tip us off. Meantime, I'll go to work on him. Yeah, don't you play him too short, you know. He was plenty tough in his day. All right, blow. Do as I told you. Let me see what you can do with the lock. I've been walking in his sleep. Get some water, Skinny. Okay. So this is the famous Duke Keesley, eh? He don't look so tough to me. To me, neither. He looks kind of cute to me. Don't let the pajamas get you, baby. Here you are. Air. <laughs> Give me some air. Uh -huh. uh. How'd I get here? You got tough with a couple of my boys, which is always bad business. Your boys? Who are you? You haven't been reading your papers very carefully, you'd know. Or maybe you didn't get any while you were in stir. I'm Frankie Saxon, top man, that's who I am. I don't think I quite understand. You will. Oh. I didn't know I was going out, I would've got dressed. Hope you'll excuse my pajamas, miss. Kind of modest, ain't he? That's all right, Duke, though personally I prefer a sarong. What'd you call me? Duke. Or ain't you used to it no more after wearing a number so long? I'm afraid you've got me mixed up with somebody else, miss. My name is Horace. Okay, okay, stop trying to put anything over on Frankie Saxon. Now get smart and tell me where that dough is. If you do, I may kick back a couple of grand to you. If you don't, I'll kick a couple of your teeth out. Now look, I don't know who you are, what you want, but there's quite obviously been a mistake made. My name is Horace, Horace Jason. And I just arrived in New York tonight on my honeymoon. Golly, I better call up Millie and tell her where I am. She'll be awful with me. You got a telephone? Oh, yeah, there it is. What's the address here? 237 West 7th. Hey, what am I doing? Go on nuts! Grab him. Would you give him... Oh. The best bit of acting I've seen since Eddie Robinson quit making gangster pictures. All right, Skinny. Now, look, Duke, if you figure on getting away with this because I ain't seen you before, forget it. Pete and Joe brought you here. Remember them? Pete and Joe? Yeah, Pete and Joe. Oh, you mean Pete Jefferson, who runs a garage in Halkett Center? I didn't even know he was in New York. I'm talking about Pete Mooney and Joe Richmond, who were with your mom before you were sent up. You remember them now, don't you? Now, cut out the act before I slap it out of you. What'd you do with the kale? Kale? Yeah, the kale, the mazuma, the moolah, or whatever they call it in your day. The 50 G's. 50 G's? Yes, they're 50 G's. Look, if, if you... If, if you'd just try to express yourself a little more clearly, I'm sure we could understand each other better. Is he making a monkey out of you? Yeah, well, nobody makes a sap out of Frankie Saxon. As much as I dislike physical violence, I can't allow anyone to strike me without returning the blow. 
didn't want it, but I guess I'll have to turn on the heat. Oh, well, I really appreciate that now, because it's getting awful chilly standing around in my pajamas. Are you ready to talk? Well, of course. You don't want to talk about it. Why, you... Hugo's late! around the street like that. There's a man following me. What man? There. I tell you, officer, he was right behind me. Sure, sure. Suppose you come along and tell us to the side. What I just told you. That's all right. There. This man was running around the street just the way you see him now. Indecent exposure, eh? What's your name? Horace Jason. I can explain everything, Captain. Never mind the promotion. I'm only a sergeant. Well, I can explain everything, Sergeant. You see, some men were about to shoot me. They had their guns out. Who and... were they? Anyone you know? No, I never saw them before. Stranger, huh? Well, I don't know any strangers either. You see, I just arrived in New York tonight on my honeymoon. That's no excuse for you to be traipsing around the streets in your pajamas. But you don't understand, Cap uh, Sergeant. Look, you see, after I found the body... Body? What body? The man's body, of course. The man's body? Was he dead? I thought he was the first time I found him. And then he, he disappeared. And the next thing I knew, he was back again. Back where? In the room. What right? room? In my room at the Hotel Clark. Where's the body now? I wish I knew. Take him away. Come on. But look, Cap Sergeant. Take him away. If, if you don't believe me, you call up Mr. Clark at the Hotel Callahan. I, I mean, call up Mr. Callahan. I... You mean the Hotel Callahan? I mean the Hotel Clark. Your wife's here for you. Uh-uh. No, sir. Tell her to go away. I'm staying right here. Not you. Him. Oh. My wife? Yeah. Oh, boy, I haven't seen her for years and years, it seems like. Uh, so long, buddy. Imagine Horace on the streets with nothing on but his pajamas. How terrible. Oh, I don't know. A guy like him's liable to be running around without him. Why, Mr. Callahan. Really? <laughs> oh, Horace, dear, are you all right? Sure I am, honey, sure. Where in the world did you go in that trunk? Oh, that's a long story, Millie. I'll tell you all about it when we get back to our room. Look, I brought your coat. Oh, thanks. One of the officers loaned me his. <laughs> well... Callahan. What's all this talk about dead bodies? Search me. But he's been seeing them all night. Have you seen any? No. But according to him, they're either arriving or just left. Wait. Or haven't arrived yet. Wait a minute. Are you all right? Sure. Could he be a little baddie? He could. Better keep your eye on him. Listen, I'm taking him to their room and then I'm through. Mm. Just a minute, Mrs. Jason. Here, Tom. Come on, you kids. Charge that to my account at the hotel. Are you sure he said his name was Frankie Saxton? Well, that's what it sounded like to me. Well, is he a real gangster? Real? He's so tough that if he sat in an electric chair, he'd blow out the fuse. Now, come on, you kids. Stay close to me. Get in that car, quick. You take your hands off Get my wife. Get in that car, quick. Oh! Come on, Missy. Well, here they come. Run. Where'd they go? Who? There's something awful funny going on around here.
Here they come. Let's go inside. They never dare look for us here. But I've seen that thing. Well, who cares about the picture? We want to hide. Go get some tickets. Hurry up, Bill. <laughs> well, what do we do now? Where would you I don't like know what to you're going to do, but Wait down, Frank. I'm going to yes. do this. Talk, Millie. Give me your hand. You'll have to let it go, sir. We're not allowed to hold hands with the customers. Excuse me. Sorry, Millie. It was an accident. The Hayes office ain't going to like that long kiss. Here you are, sir. <laughs> Glad it's so dark, Millie. I'll never be able to find us in here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, this is the biggest house we've had yet. Well, tonight, as you all know, is prize night. I have here in this derby had a half a dozen slips, all of which denote different prizes. Now, the holder of the lucky number will come up here and draw one slip, just one, mind you. And whatever is written on that slip, they will receive. And believe me, we have some prizes here tonight. Is there somebody who will help me out? Oh, come on. Now, somebody must come up here and draw the lucky number. You, young lady. Okay, that beautiful girl with the red hair and the brown suit. Would you please step up here? Oh, come on. Let her go, will you? I'll send her right back to you. <laughs> <laughs> go on, honey. Get some. Come on. Hey, don't do that, Millie. They might see you. That's fine. Come on. Step right up here. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't she nice? Well, thank you very much for coming up. Oh, pardon me. <coughs> I have to shake these numbers up. Go ahead. 9763. Has anybody got 9763? 9763. Well, there must be somebody in the house with this number. Oh, please, you can't be so rich that you won't take something for nothing. 9763. Has anybody got 9763? Oh, come, come. Can you beat that? 9762. That's always my luck. I can. 9763. What do you have? I don't know. Is everybody oh, awake? Take a look. Let's see. Anybody sleeping out there? Well, you've got the winning number right there. Shh. I haven't got any. Well, you have to. That's a lucky number right there. Here it is. This is the winning number right here. 9763. Well, fine. Come on up here, young man. Oh, go on. Go up and win your prize. Well, you've got the lucky number Please, right don't there. Don't well, why don't you? Here he is, right here. This is the man. Right this way, please. I don't want it. You might as well go on up here. It'll make a nice wedding present for Oh, her. come on. Oh, go on. Oh. Go and get your present. Oh. Come right up, young man. What? Huh? Congratulations. <laughs> well, 9763. Huh, good luck. That's fine. He won. <laughs> well, I hope we didn't wake you up. <laughs> well, the picture couldn't have been that bad. <laughs> no, sir. I haven't slept a wink all night, you see. I'm on my honeymoon. Honeymoon? Oh, congratulations. It's a funny place to spend it. <laughs> there you are. Go ahead, draw a slip. All right, go on, read it. What does it say? Sterling Silver Coffee Set. Why, you want a Sterling Silver Coffee Set? Some prize. Oh, there you are. Thank you. My wife can sure use these. Well, most women can. But the trick is for you to learn to duck them. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, thank you. There you are. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. Next week at the same night as you know, we'll have prize night. And good luck. Bye, Bonds. Go ahead, Harmon. Pardon me, Millie. Oh, excuse me, Millie. Millie? Did you see where my wife went? She left with a couple of men while you were up on the stage. A couple of men? Jeepers! Millie! Millie! Oh. 
She ain't hurt and she won't be, just as long as you don't try to take a powder. I never take powders. They're bad for my heart. What I want to know is where is she? Frankie's got her. And if you want to, come along with me. Hey, taxi! Taxi! Two thirty-seven West Seventy-fourth. You know, I wouldn't want Frankie to know this, but I've been dying to meet you since I was a kid. To meet me? Yes. I used to read about you. You was Mr. Big, all right. You were making believe you're just an out-of-town jerk. <laughs> I'm not making believe. All right, all right. Have it your way. Can you imagine me riding in the same cab with you? Well, it would have been kind of silly to take two cabs, don't you think? You know, I could go for you. You're kind of cute. And uh, don't talk to me like that. I'm a married man. So what? I was married myself once. I don't think Millie would like that. Then why waste a money, honey? Now, you go away from me. Go away now. I'll yell. Real loud, too. Why, and how could Senator they put you in jail for something like this? Oh, you, you gangsters, you. Get the door, Tubby. <clears throat> I figured grabbing your mall would bring you back here. Melly. Horace. <laughs> they told me if I didn't come with them, they'd kill you. And me too. What? How dare you treat my wife like this? Wife? And you only ought to stir yesterday? <laughs> oh, that must have been a fast pickup. I did not pick her up. We were introduced formally at an ice cream social. Now look. Either you tell me what you did with that door, it'll be just too bad for you and the babe. I tell you, you're making a mistake. Yeah, well, I'm through talking. You see this? Yeah. If you don't open up, I'm gonna let you have it. I don't want it. Yeah. Well, what would I do with it? I never fired a gun in my life. I'll give you just one minute to spill. Well, I searched his room and couldn't find a thing, so I, uh... Who's that? Who's that? Yeah. You kidding? That's a duke. Him? He ain't the duke. He ain't? No. Well, you see, I told you you were making Shut a mistake. Up. Shut up! Don't talk to Frankie like that. What's the idea of telling me you guys put the Duke in the trunk? Because we did. Pete and I put him there. Yeah, well, when I opened it, he falls out. Was he in that trunk? You don't think I want him in a raffle, do you? You got me. If you just let me explain... Shut up or I'll clot you. I don't understand you, Mr. Frankie. First of all, you're angry with me because I won't talk. And the next thing I know, you're angry because I want to talk. Obviously, you can't make up your mind. I got it now. This is the guy whose room we followed Duke into. And he wasn't kidding. He really is a jerk. Well, I certainly am glad you discovered the truth about my husband. What's happened to the Duke? Search me. We got to get out of here and find him ourselves. Well, what about them? They're liable to hop over to the cops just as soon as we blow. Yeah, we'll tie him up and cram something in their mouths and leave him here till we take care of the Duke. Come on, Come get on. away here. Get Hey, the don't do that to us. Well, I can tell you. And so tonight we find the heroine, the beautiful Imogene, <laughs> by the dust of the killer, huh? two gun castle. <laughs> Only the But I will he reach her in time. Kenny? <laughs> Listen, Gideons. <laughs> Let me go! Let me go! Oh, if only Josephine Stewart Hart were here! Now, tell me where he is before I kill you. You wouldn't dare! Why wouldn't I? <laughs> Perhaps that'll prove to you that Killer Carson does not jest. Homer, I told you we had gangsters living next door. Sounds like it, don't it? Uh, maybe I better call the police. Now, you mean tell you better... me where your father is. Yes, I think no, I won't. If 
you don't, I'll shoot first and ask questions afterwards. Why would you do a thing like that to me? Because I'm curious. Really? No wonder he's always shooting his mouth off. You wouldn't say that if he were here. If he comes yeah, here, I'll yeah, scare him so his yeah. toupee will stand up. Uh -huh. It'd be a shame to have to puncture a body as beautiful as yours. Homer! Come on, Emotive. please! Wait, wait, wait. Are you alive? Hello, yes. hello. Yes. Give me the police, quick. Oh, thank heavens, you're Listen, here. boy. Now be careful, he's quite a danger. Just from us. I shall fed you so full of lead that you'll be placed on a priority list. There it is, boy. Open up. Get away from that door, I'll shoot. I warn you, don't try to come in. All right, boys. Let him have it. Joseph P. Strongheart saved the beautiful Imogene? Will he? Listen in tomorrow night at the same time, same station. Good night, kiddies. Happy dreams. This program was brought to you by Woodside Cemetery. We never have a word of complaint from 4,000 satisfied customers. So it's you again. What are you doing here? Frankie Saxon brought us here. He tied us up and then left us. I put on this radio real loud, hoping it might attract somebody's attention. Well, you succeeded all right. According to reports I got from the neighbors, a regular massacre was going on. You say Frankie Saxon brought you here? Yes, sir. He's certainly been making life miserable for Millie and me. A man like that should be in jail. He has been 11 times. What did Frankie want with you? I don't know. He thought I was some fellow named the Duke. Duke Kiesler, I think it was. You go out and pick up Frankie Saxon and find out what it's all about. You stay here in case he should come back. You two come with me and I'll take you to the hotel before he gets in any more trouble. Come on, help me on time, Pat. Double-crossing rat. Talking that way ain't gonna get you nowhere. No. What will? Where did you hide it? Hide what? The 50 G's. Come again. If you don't tell me, you ain't gonna live to spend it. Suppose I, uh, give you a five grand. <laughs> Frankie wouldn't like that. Ten grand. <laughs> I don't think I'd live to spend it. No soap, Duke. Come on, we're wasting time. Now get that dough. All right, come on. So, there you are. Hello, Mr. Callahan. I hope you haven't been worried about it. Oh, no. Only it gives me kind of a funny feeling going around talking to myself. Where'd you find him? Frankie Saxon's apartment. How did he get there? That's a $64 question, Pat. Would you believe it? Frankie took him for Duke Kiesler. <laughs> Frankie must be crazy. He ain't, I will be. Remember, will you? Stay close to them. Do me a favor, will you? Don't let them kids out again or we'd have to call out the reserves. With thousands of hotels in New York, they had to pick out this one. Is it all right if we go to our room now? Is it all right? It's perfect. I'll take you there myself. Come on. Maybe I'd better stick with you for the rest of the night, just to make sure you don't get in any more trouble. Oh, no, that won't be necessary, Mr. Callahan. Now that the police know everything, I'm sure we won't be bothered anymore. Now, the sergeant's going to arrest this Frankie fellow, so we've nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, 
I guess you're in the clear now. You're sure you're not going to leave your room anymore? Not unless he comes back again. Oh, Horace and I haven't been alone one minute since we've been married. Yeah, that's right. Well, good night. Good night, Mr. Callahan. See you in the morning. Not if I can help it. What a night. What a night. I guess things like this must happen often in big cities. Yeah, I guess so, Millie, but it doesn't seem fair when you're on your honeymoon and you have to report to the Army the first thing in the morning. Thank heavens it's all over now. Yeah. I'm going to bed and I'm not going to get up until 6 o'clock. The way I feel, I could sleep until 7. that you're saying you found the Duke dead here twice before. I tell you we did. I swear, it's the truth. Horace never lies. He was born on Washington's birthday. Never mind when he was born. If he was dead before, where did he go to? I don't know. He just disappeared. Disappeared? I suppose he took a notion to get up and walk around the block. Maybe he took some vitamin pills. Yeah. Maybe he did. It looks mighty suspicious to me. Frankie Saxon taking you for Kiesler and finding the Duke dead here in your room. But I tell you, I never saw either one of them in my life. That's right. We've never been in New York before. Horace and I just came here on our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. And then things began to happen. <clears throat> That's putting it mildly. Where'd you say you came from? Halkett Center. You ever hear of that town? Nope. Must be one of them whistle stops where everybody comes down to meet the train. What train? Oh, what I've got to put up with. Jim. Call up the mayor of that town. What'd you say the name was? Halcott Center. Halcott Center. And find out if they're telling the truth. Sergeant, you should have brought your lie detector. I couldn't. She's washed the dishes. Go and look it over and see what you can find. Where do you think you're going? I'm just going to get my lounging robe. It's cold sitting around here like this. Okay. I'll go with you. Hold this for me, will you please, Sergeant? Sure. What do I look like, a butler? I don't know. We never had a butler. Get in there with yourself. Get it to me, dear. Sergeant. Yeah. It's the only thing I found on the body. What does it say? Hung far low. Shirt laundry, 15 cents. Uh -huh. That guy's cheaper than my laundry one. Give me that. Okay, Mayor. Thanks. Uh, you can go back to bed now. They were married there this morning, all right. The mayor said he did the job himself. See there? What did I tell you? 
Anything again him? Yeah, he was arrested 14 years ago. Aha. Uh -huh. Stealing apples out of a farmer's orchard. Oh, now I remember. Oh, give me a bellyache, too. Horace, you never told me about that. I was ashamed. What do you make of them? You got me. I wish they'd leave and the American Legion to come back. Then we'd have some peace and quiet for a change. All right, boys. Take them away. Now you stay with them. And don't let them out of your sight for one minute. What are you going to do with us now? Nothing. But you're under suspicion. And remember, don't start out of this room until you hear from me. Sure, sure. We're not going anyplace. Are we, Millie? We certainly aren't. And to make certain, I just told Callahan to stay with you in case Saxon comes back. Who ever heard of three people on a honeymoon? I'd like to get a little sleep myself. You do as you're told. And remember, don't you leave them alone for one minute. Not till you hear from me. Well, I guess that's that. We should have stayed in Halkett Center. Things like this don't happen there. Yeah, we could have had a much more peaceful honeymoon at home. If I ever get my hands on that Frankie Saxon fella. Yes, he's the one responsible for all this. Why don't you kids make believe I ain't here? Huh? Go on, go to sleep. Don't mind me. No, no, thank you, Mr. Callahan. We're not tired. Yeah, we'll just stay up and wait until we hear from the sergeant, I guess. You know, this makes me feel like Basil Repfo. See, as long as you kids ain't going to sleep, how about doing something to pass the time? What? Well, how about playing a little cards? No, Millie doesn't play cards. Oh, don't mind me, Horace. Uh, I'll read a magazine. You go on and play with Mr. Callahan. Well... Do you play casino? Sure. Ten cents a deal. Well, I never play that high. Okay, make it a nickel. All right. I'll go get the cards. And Spain. That gives me the game. I don't really feel like playing anymore, Mr. Callahan. I guess I must be getting tired. Okay with me. Well, I owe you a nickel. Oh, forget it. No, I always pay my debts. I'll go get it. Got change of a dime? Yeah, sure. There. Thanks. You play a good game, Mr. Callahan. You ain't so bad yourself, but there's the finer points. Uh, I always like a good opponent. A thousand dollar bill. A thousand dollar bill? What did you say? Look, Millie, a thousand dollars. Where did you get that? I just stuck my hand in my pocket and there it was. Look, my pockets are full of them. Five, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars. Do you mean to say you've had all that money and you didn't tell me about it? I never saw it before, Millie. I just found it in my pocket. I should have a pocket like that. Well, if it isn't yours, whose is it? Wait a minute. Reading the Duke was killed. I better fold the sergeant. Deep in the heart of... Why, Mr. Frankie. 
One yap out of either of you, and it's your finish. Thanks. Saves the trouble of looking for it. Is that yours? It is now. <laughs> Maybe like a receipt. I told you guys that do get that dough hit here all the time. Yes, yeah, the sap we'd listen to reason, he'd still be breathing. I guess I'd better tell the police you're here. They've been looking all over for you. Excuse me. Are you kidding? Don't try that again. I'll just soon shoot you as look at you. Back sooner. If you hurt my husband, I'll scream. Pipe down. Well, I'm with them and I'll be screwy. <laughs> now, this chump would give an aspirin a headache. Maybe he ain't as dumb as he looks. He couldn't be. Horace, are you going to stand there and let them say those things about you? Well, honey, none of us are perfect. Come on, Frankie, let's blow. Yeah, it'll take us a couple of minutes to get away from here. Lock him in the closet. You've got no right treating us like this. You, you gangster, you. Haven't you caused us enough trouble already? Well, I shut up. Come on. Get him in there. Come on, lady. Now, let me go! <laughs> you take your hands off my wife, you hear? Thanks, Millie. Now, don't you move. Don't you move. Girl, Millie. Hey, there's another one. I know you don't. Get his gun, too, Millie. No, no, don't go in front of me. Where is it? In his hip pocket, I think. Oh. What'll I do with him? I, I don't care, Millie. Just get rid of him. Throw him out the window, anything. Well. I've never fired a gun before, but I understand that all I have to do is squeeze this little thing. No, it'll go off. Now, you're all going to stay right here until the police come. I'm sick and tired of you spoiling my honeymoon all the time. Um, excuse me, Millie, our honeymoon. Go, go telephone the police, will you? Now, you, you get out of her way. Uh, will you send for the police, please? Yes, again. No, no, Mr. Callahan's of no use. He's on the floor, unconscious. What? No, no, he's not drunk. He's... Oh, just send for the police and hurry. Be it, Pete. I dropped the gun. Where's the gun? Oh, the heck with it. Oh, did you see two fellas come out of here? Around there. Come on. Send him up for life. What's the matter? What's going on here? Uh, I was uh, just talking to a friend, that's all. Uh, goodbye, Charlie. Uh, what? Frankie Saxton. Where did you find him? In my room. I demand you arrest this man, Sergeant. He's a thief. No kidding. Well, if you don't believe me, Here's the $50,000 that he stole. Where did you get this? He took it from Mr. Callahan. Mr. Callahan got it from me, and I found it in my pocket. How did it come to be in your pocket? Are oh, you haven't any idea. 
Horace, are you all right? Of course, honey. Did they hurt you? Oh, no. Any man in class 1A could whip him with one hand. Good work, kid. I gotta hand it to you. Where can it be reached if I want you for the trial? Well, just write me. Horace Jason, care of the United States Army. All right, take him away. If there's anything you want, just ask for it. Hmm? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Night. Well, good night. Good night. Boy, am I tired. You'd think I'd been up all night. My mama told me to expect exciting things to happen on my honeymoon, but I never expected anything like what's happened. just to make sure we won't be disturbed anymore. Well... Darn. Oh, I stubbed my toe. Good morning, Mr. Jason. It's six o'clock. Thank you. Six o'clock? Already? All right, thanks. Oh. Melly, it's six o'clock. Better hurry up and get dressed, you know. Oh, we'll miss that train. Come on, hurry. Darn those Japs. Mm -hmm. 